I'm going to start this video off, guys, by showing you that I am a power user of Claude code. Okay, this is all Claude code usage, right? If I just go back and we do this for November, I just want you guys to understand that I am a massive Claude code fan. I use it every single day. I used it for about 14 hours yesterday alone. Now for, for some reason, I'm not seeing Opus 4.5 in these costs, but I mean, we do mainly use Claude Sonnet um, as well. And this is all coding, right? This is all Claude code. This is extra API usage after you've used your max plan. We have two max plans and we're still spending this amount on Claude code. Now, I start that, I start the video by saying that because I want you to understand that I'm not just talking shit about this company or whatever for the sake of it, right? Now, I am warning you guys to stop vibe coding, right? I'm going to define vibe coding by, for example, having three different windows open on Claude Code, telling it to do a load of shit, activating dangerously skip permissions, and then just letting it run, right? And then hoping that you're going to come back to a complete project or, you know, successful changes. This would have worked two weeks ago, okay? Unfortunately, and I'm telling you right now, I'm not guessing, all right? Like I said, I'm a power user. Opus 4.5 has 1 million percent been nerfed, okay? Yesterday, I gave it a very, very simple task of taking Google AI Studio code, porting it into a SaaS, which I made yesterday. Now, although the design of this website, yeah, really beautiful, amazing, cool. And by the way, this is postforge.ai. You can use this completely for free. This is just a project that I set up in yesterday's stream. However, when I gave it the Google AI Studio code, the model was Gemini 3. And then Opus decided to change that to Flash, right? But not even 3 Flash, which doesn't exist. It changed it to 2 Flash, right? This is something that happens a lot with kind of worse models. You give it an instruction with a specific model and it changes the model because it's training doesn't think this model exists, right? I then told it five times, right? You can go back and watch the stream, guys. I'm not fucking exaggerating. I told it five times to change the model to Gemini 3 and it didn't do it a single time. Eventually, I had to change to Sonnet and I asked it to actually read what I was sending it and Sonnet immediately recognized what was going on. And only then did it change it to Gemini 3, right? Another example, last night, I rebuilt the entirety of Harbor, right? This is not harbor.seo.ai. This is actually my local version of a Next.js and convex port of Harbor. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm taking Harbor back uh, because it was in the hands of, first of all, the devs that made it and later on devs that we hired to kind of improve it. And yeah, I was just getting sick of waiting around for other people to do things that I can now do. Uh, the database wasn't in my hands. You know, it was just complicated. So I'm basically I'm taking Harbor back into my own hands. I made this entire thing yesterday using not vibe coding, but what I'm going to kind of refer to, I don't know what to refer it to, what, how to refer it, but basically what I'm doing now is AI augmented coding. Now, I'm still not calling myself a developer. I'm not a developer. However, I am at the point now where my understanding of programming and coding and development is at the point where I can just code with AI doing the coding and me doing the kind of programming or the ideas or telling it what to do and what not to do. Now, this did an amazing job. But again, this is why I'm recommending that you stop vibe coding, right? Even with proper documentation, which obviously I had, you know, memory files set up, plan files set up, everything. It randomly in the middle of creation, right? It keeps doing this thing. There's two things that it's doing. The first one is normal reward hacking which if you don't know, reward hacking is where something in the code doesn't work. So it cheats, like it comments out an important piece of information 
or an important um, important piece of code which is causing it problems and just says you know we'll just come back to this later let, let, let's just do a fallback right and then it just print logs some bullshit and the other thing it does is again it changes the model i was using gpt5 nano right for a very important reason it's an intelligent model that is very cheap right i don't want to use a different model i specifically wanted to use gpt5 nano and guess what it did halfway through the code and i was watching everything luckily luckily i wasn't vibe coding i was watching everything i was doing ai assisted augmented code right and basically what it did was halfway through it just said you know what probably the problem is this model doesn't exist and changed it to gpt4 which is not only a really expensive model, I don't even think it exists anymore. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, Hamish, you fucking change your mind every day. How am I supposed to keep up with things? I'm trying to keep you up with things, right? That's what I'm trying to do. This isn't a theory. I had to use Sonnet last night just to get basic coding done. This was at 6 a.m., right? So there's not even the excuse of, oh, it was, you know, a high time. Everyone was using it etc etc now my other proof is this right here and this happens every single time guys i've watched this happen time after time after time as soon as there are issues elevated errors elevated errors partial outage elevated errors partial outage as soon as this starts happening right the most important thing for a company is to have 100 percent uptime if they only have 90% uptime, they're considered to be a weaker company. There's no proof that the models are worse, right? You, we, we can't prove it. But there is proof if they don't have 100% uptime. So for a company like Anthropic or OpenAI, the most important thing for them is to have 100% uptime. They don't care about the intelligence of the models. They've already got the hype. Everyone is already using it. Look, 99% uptime. This is what they care about right? These companies, they care about users and uptime. They don't care about the intelligence of their models. They build hype by releasing these fantastic models. Too many people use them. Their servers can't handle it. They push the nozzle down. And now I'm telling you, last night, Haiku was unusable. Sorry, not Haiku. Opus 4.5 was unusable. I couldn't use it. It was that bad. I had to swap back to Sonnet. And guess what? Sonnet 4.5 worked. This is becoming a pattern and it's becoming more and more frustrating. You cannot trust these models, guys. You cannot vibe code. If you are sitting there and leaving your code with 12 clawed codes open to code all day and you're going to come back and expect it to have actually built something good, I've got news for you. It's not going to build anything good. Okay? I am a massive fan of clawed code. I'm still using it as we speak. I'm literally using it right here, right now, right? So I know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. I really, really do like this model, that, that this um, thing they've made. But Opus has been nerfed 100%. I'm going to leave the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. Check out the school community, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.